Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're going to be doing an updated tier list over on Pridewind, taking a look at Florabelle's ratings and all that good stuff. Also, some big PvP changes, which we will go through as well. But first of all, we're going to go through uh, Florabelle mainly focused in story early, mid, late, talk about Dream Realm quickly, and then cover the PvP. So the first thing that people always ask me is, what do you consider early, mid, and late game? Now, it's really hard to put a, um, a firm setting on this because it also depends on spending values because in here when we look at the ratings uh early is zero to 300 afk stage with epic tier and no exclusive weapon um exclusive equipment whatever it is 301 to 700 is mid game where you're considering mythic plus now i know a lot of free-to-play players me myself i'm into 600 and something and I only have two Mythic Plus characters. A lot of people with worse luck won't have any. So that's obviously the thing. So it is hard to judge where spenders would have them earlier. And so it's a hard thing to balance, but that's what the criteria is. And then late game is level 701 AFK stage plus with Supreme Plus and exclusive weapons at plus 10, which is where a lot of characters get their max viability out of the exclusive weapon. Uh, and then Dream Realm and PvP is maxed out and stuff like that. So that's the criteria that we're looking at. Let's take a quick look at the change log. So Florabelle has been added to the tier list. You can consider Florabelle as Cecilia's sister. Both focus on summons and their performance is very similar across the modes. Uh, they have the same advantages and disadvantages are still what sets Flora apart is her synergy with other summoners once you get her to EX plus 10. So let's jump in and take a look at the rankings in the tier list. We'll start off with story in the early game. Now, you do see her down here in A tier. Me personally, I think A tier is a little bit rough. I'd like to see her bumped up into S tier. But if you're wondering like if she functions the same as Cecilia in the early game, why is she below Cecilia? So... For me, from my testing, I feel like they function pretty much exactly the same in the early game in the Coco, Smokey, and Tandra Rowan team. They both feel pretty much exactly the same. In some situations, each one's better. It depends on the situation. Sometimes Cecilia is better because you get that wider AoE on her first ultimate to control more enemies, but sometimes you just get more throughput on the Flora, uh, Flora Bell because she has the extra summons. Sometimes her first little summon can actually take some damage that helps her survive because in that Coco, Smokey, and Tanja Rowan team, you are going to be running this character in the front row. And for Flora Bell, she has extra tankiness as well because she is a warrior. So I, I, do, say, I do think that in like for likeness at the same ascension the two are pretty much the same in the early game from the testing i did now that is just one person's testing so once again always take this stuff with a grain of salt however the thing we can't ignore in this situation and i think they've tried to reflect this in the tier list is that you essentially can get three free copies of cecia at the moment florabelle is on the exclusive banner Exclusive banner also excludes you from getting as many A-level characters, which are really important in early progression. I'll make a whole video talking about exclusive banners, saving for them, spending on them, all that stuff. But it's a very interesting topic with, I don't think, a direct right answer. But because you get three free copies of Cecilia, it kind of gives her that extra boost, which I know in a tier list, normally you're trying to look at like for likeness. But I think it's also, if you put them both S plus in early, then it could lead people to be pushing for that Florabelle copies um, when it's not really needed because of the free-to-play access you have to Cecilia. So that would be my understanding for uh, why Cecilia is above Florabelle. Once again, I think Florabelle should only be one tier below Cecilia on that, that aspect, though. Uh, I definitely don't think... I, th I think she's better than Corrin early game. Uh, I think she's better than Valen. Like, okay... Valen, no one's going to have him on the wishlist, so you're not going to have the copies. You get the one free copy at the start, so he, he kind of gets dropped. Odie, I can definitely see being here because most people are going to be getting Odie from the Dream Store as well, which means you're going to have him higher ascension, which means that, that value is going to go up. Bryon, I've never tested personally. Viperion is great, uh, especially if you're running the Cecilia carry. Maybe you pull the Thorin, and then you run like a Smokey and a Rowan, or you could be running the Antandra smokey Coco combo, uh, and then you don't have Rowan, so maybe you're running Thorin and Cecilia, or sometimes you can tech in Cecilia and Viperion. Viperion's just a decent tech, and he's just really solid in the early game in general is what my thought is but once again I, I can definitely agree and get behind their reasoning for putting Florabelle below Cecilia but I think they just dropped her one one too low and I'd like to see her up in that S tier and probably dropping like Corrin and Valen down into the A tier would be my recommendation but if you're only arguing one tier adjustments you know, it's not the end of the world but as you'll see when we get into the late game she does pair up evenly with Cecilia and we'll talk about that as we go through. The only other character that I think in the early game deserves a little boost is probably Vala. I still think she's super clutch in situations depending on your roster 
roster, like having that back row access in the early game uh, can be super clutch, even at one copy, in my opinion. Now, as we move on into the mid game, this is where Florabelle comes up into the S tier. Now, mid game is where we consider to have unlocked the exclusive equipment. You've got them at Mythic Plus. Um, so this is where Florabelle then starts shielding her units, which means now they get even more tankiness. Now, when we unlock the exclusive equipment, I feel like this is where she's pretty much on par with Cecilia um, because we've I don't know whether you're still considering the fact that Cecilia's had those extra copies, whatever it is. But, um, you know, if she's one tier down, I'm not too stressed about that. But yes, I think at Mythic Plus, she's definitely a really, really solid unit. And then she just keeps getting better. Now, the other units we look at in here is Vala and Odie going up into the S Plus. Vala because uh, she can start stop dying when she assassinates. And Odie because he can just start insta-killing and it just becomes busted with his uh, exclusive equipment. But that is what we look at there. Once again, Florabella, yeah, she could go up. But if she's there, it's not the end of the world. To me i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it once again i feel like i feel like florabelle was a perfectly launched first new character to the point that if you pulled for her you're not ruining your account but there is absolutely no need to pull for her because we already have that role filled with Cecilia, who you get a bunch of free copies for. So I, I feel like she was a nice balanced character, whereas if we didn't get free copies of Cecilia, maybe you'd be going for Florabelle instead. But that's more of an argument to be had uh, also once she goes into the standard banner on whether you actually go for her from the standard banner. There's a lot of conversations to be had there, but I think the character was a really good first character because if we had mega power creep on first character, that would be very worrying. Uh, and she was good, but she wasn't completely broken and she wasn't trash she's just a good well-balanced character in my opinion so let's go into the late game Moving into the late game, this is where she pumps up to S+. She gets that extra viability of the 10 exclusive equipment, which then allows her to be um, buffing an extra summon, which is a really strong effect with the offensive pressure. Now she's got the defensive capabilities with the shields on the summons, along with the extra offensive pressure. And now this is where when we get into the late game, we start seeing the wilders start to rise up and the maulers start to creep down a little bit because we're shifting into the Iron meta, which is that group up and Carolina destroys everything and that is the kind of meta once again this is considering every character at max essential or supreme plus with uh the the beefed up uh, exclusive equipment and so this is where those comps really start to shine with you Damien as well obviously Thorin's just staying in s plus tier the whole way the dude is an absolute monster no matter which way you look at it he is just an absolute beast in the game okay let's go into dream realm quickly uh this one I I'm pretty cool with uh so see you next to Floribel makes sense they're pretty much the same i do think florabelle from my testing had a tiny bit higher damage uh like raw damage output but it's not to the point where i would put her a tier above cecilia i feel like next to each other is perfectly fine and i feel like a gap between these three and everyone else in this damage tier uh, is pretty fair as well so i'm pretty cool with that Moving on to the PvP tier list. Now, this is where we have had a bunch of changes uh, in the change look. Uh, Arden has gone up because he's so powerful in the Iron comp. So what's, what, what the current meta is, and it has been for a while now, is Iron with Carolina, uh, group up and insta-kill everything before they get a chance. Damien's great with this because he increases haste uh, and he makes that function a bit faster. Arden is great because he's another DPS. He also provides a bit of CC uh, and he just synergizes super well with that comp. Now, with that comp, those are the four main ones you'll see then you'll see often something like Thorin or a tech unit Parisa being another one she has is another one that's really gone up in the tier list uh, over recent times because of her viability as a damage dealer in the Iron comp also like a supportive character in the Iron comp so she's like a like a, like a mixed character that just kind of kind of synergizes really well with it so that's why she is there uh, now Florabelle here is a tier above the Cecilia in PvP now to my understanding that's because she does have more synergies with the Wilders as well also she has that burial comp which does also use Cecilia but she is the enabler for that comp which is the burial comp which is the arise team I like to call it where burial can summon like a ton of his shadows and she shields them all and it works really well so that's why she I think she is up there I could be wrong on that take but once again that is her main purpose but the the overwhelming sense in pvp is that it's dominated by Euron Carolina and that's what most people are running 
on defense and you've got to try and count defense and offense but you're trying to counter other people's iran carolina teams is essentially what the game is now igor is one of those units that can be really annoying on defense and maybe rng clutch you some wins then we have scarlita once again this is considering every character at supreme plus so obviously no free to play is going to have this so you don't have to really worry about it but when we look at the whale meta her knockoffs are just so clutch uh and she's just a she's an all-round powerful pvp unit and then we have rainier as well up here now rainier is a fantastic one to try and counter enemy teams you can swap an ally's position uh with one of your enemies maybe you swap it with the enemy carolina and try and lock her out the very start of the match so that she can't get her damage out there's a lot of strategies you can do that uh some of the maps though for rainier make him really difficult to use and people that are smart setting up their defenses can be like really frustrating where you can't actually get a swap on a character that you would want to swap and i i feel like just just the layout on some of the maps where it doesn't use the mirror it uses like the opposite so hard to explain but just if you go into arena and you try using arena you'll see that sometimes you just cannot swap with a character because you cannot get another character in that exact opposite spot so it's a bit of an awkward one uh as we move on to human and granny um one of the ways to try and counter the iron comp is to like out tank it and Huan is basically the best tank healer rowan is a fantastic healer just in clutch situations his energy regeneration and those potions with that smart healing is fantastic so he has that that usage to be really an enabler for more energy type comps uh but once again the, the thing about the iron team is you don't need the energy as much because you're just like going in and you're bursting straight up but Huan and granny great for those tanky type teams that try and stall out the iron comp till it runs out of gas uh, and then goes with that direction but that pretty much covers everything i wanted to go through in the tier list like i said i feel like this is pretty fair the only change i would personally make would be to bump florabelle up one tier into s but i can also understand the reasoning for this because they don't want to be pushing people and making flora look like a must pull for everyone starting the game when it's a bit awkward when you get three free copies of cecia essentially uh from the first temple and also from two copies from the arena store the rest of the ratings i think are fairly fair uh let me know what you guys think and as always thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.